Welcome to the first round of the Putnam battle that I'm doing with the channel Prof Omar Math. So our plan is to do four total solutions to question A6 from the 2018 Putnam. So I'm going to do two solutions. He's going to do two solutions. Two solutions are going to be on my channel. Two solutions are going to be his on, on his channel. In this first round, my solution is going to be on my channel and his solution is going to be on his channel. And in the second round, we're going to flip. So we're going to have guest appearances on each other's channel. So I'm pretty excited to work with him again and look forward to more collaborations like this in the future. Okay, so let's go ahead and look at the statement of the problem before we get into it. So let's suppose that A, B, C, and D are in the Euclidean plane. So we're going to put this into a coordinate system. So I've just written at it as being in R2. And they are distinct points such that no three are collinear. Show that if the square of all of these distances, so the square of the segment AB, AC, AD, BC, BD, and CD are all rational numbers. Now notice that's not those distances, it's the square of those distances. Then the area of the triangle ABC divided by the area of triangle ABD is also a rational number. So like I said, we're going to use a coordinate system for this problem. So my hints are going to be built around that solution that we're doing in this case. So like I said, we're going to pick a nice coordinate system, carefully choose the origin, and then express everything in terms of coordinates. So maybe you want to pause the video and give this problem a go, thinking about these hints, and then we'll come back for a full solution. So hopefully you made good headway with this problem using those hints. So now let's get into the solution. So let's uh, set A and B along the x-axis such that the origin, so 0, 0 is their midpoint. So that's how we're going to pick our coordinate system. So let's go ahead and sketch up a picture of the situation. So I'm going to have my x-axis here, and recall that A and B are going to be along my x-axis. So let's maybe put A back here, and let's put B up here. We're saying that the origin is their midpoint, so we need to pick a point right in between A and B, and then our y-axis will go through that point. Okay, great. And then the distance from A to B is a rational number. So we might as well set the X coordinate of A and B equal to the square root of a rational number. In other words, we're going to set this equal to the coordinate negative the square root of A comma zero and this equal to the coordinate square root of A comma zero. And now notice that that tells us that we have a b squared equals, so notice the distance from a to b in this case is two times the square root of a. So if we square that, we get four a, which is a rational number. So this is one of our given facts in the problem. Recall that we're given that the square of all of these line segment lengths is in the rational numbers. And then notice since we know that 4a is a rational number, then that immediately tells us that a is also a rational number. So let's go ahead and put a box around this because this is going to be really important as we move on. Now I'm going to semi-randomly put c and d on the plane so we can get a feel for what the rest of this question is asking. So let's maybe put c up here and let's say that that has coordinates given by x1 comma y1 and then let's put d maybe uh, right here and let's say that has coordinates x2 comma y2. And then let's draw in the triangles that uh, serve as our goal, really. So we have triangle ABC. So let's, that's like this triangle right here. And then we have triangle ABD. So that's like that triangle right there. And now our goal is to show that the ratio of the area of those triangles is a rational number. That means we need the height of those triangles using the fact that the area of a triangle is one half base times height. So since we've put AB along the x-axis, we know the height of this triangle ABC is equal to the y-coordinate of C. In other words, it's y1. And then we know the height of this other triangle is equal to uh, y2, where we change the sign kind of as appropriate. So in other words, we really think about this point right here as being plus or minus y2, depending on the sign of y2. And we think about this point up here as being plus or minus y1, depending on the sign of y1, just to clear any of that up. Okay, so now let's 
state our goal in terms of our picture. So like I said, our, our goal is that the ratio of the area of these triangles is a rational number. So in other words, we have area of triangle A, B, C divided by area of triangle A, B, D. So in terms of our coordinates over there, we know one half base times height, like I said before. So that's one half. The base of each triangle is two times the square root of A. So we get the square root of A times Y1. So the one half built into the area formula and the two built into the length of the base uh, cancel out. And then for the bottom triangle, we have the square root of A times Y2. So in other words, we have Y1 over Y2. And our goal is to show that Y1 over Y2 is indeed a rational number. So we're given that the square of every possible line segment is a rational number. So we've already used that to write that the square of AB, which is equal to little a, is a rational number. Now we want to see what that tells us about the rest of the coordinates. So notice we'll use the distance formula for all of these. So AC squared will be x1 plus the square root of a quantity squared plus y1 squared. So we're in fact given that that is a rational number. And then bc squared tells us that x1 minus the square root of a squared plus y1 squared is a rational number. And then a d squared tells us that x2 plus the square root of a squared plus y1 squared is a rational number. Um, b d squared is equal to x2 minus the square root of a squared plus y2 squared. That's a rational number. And then finally, we know that c d squared is also a rational number, and that's going to give us x1 minus x2 squared plus y1 minus y2 squared. That is also a rational number. So now we can actually depart from our picture and work only off of these equations. So somehow we want to massage these equations, the fact that all of these are rational numbers, together to show that the ratio of y1 and y2 is a rational number. So I'll clean up the board and bring these facts up to the top and then we'll work towards this which I've boxed in green. Okay, from the last board, we took all of these squares of lengths of line segments and rewrote them using our coordinates. So we have a as a rational number, x1 plus the square root of a squared plus y1 squared as a rational number, and so on and so forth. And let's recall that our goal was to show that the ratio y1, y2 is also a rational number. So what I want to do now is somehow combine these in a way so that we can work to that ratio of y1 with y2. So I'm going to start by taking ac squared plus bc squared. So notice each of these is a rational number, which means their sum is a rational number. So let's see what that gives us. So notice that's going to give us x1 plus the square root of a squared plus y1 squared plus x 1 minus the square root of a squared plus y1 squared. Great. So notice that when we multiply this out, we'll get x1 squared, and then we'll have plus 2 the square root of a times x1, but then we'll have a minus 2 times the square root of a x1 here. So those are going to cancel, and we're going to be left with x1 squared plus a plus y1 squared and then another x1 squared plus a plus y1 squared. So like I said, the cross term from multiplying this out and the cross term from multiplying this out, in this case, this one was equal to 2 times the square root of a times x1, and this was negative 2 times the square root of a times x1. Those are going to cancel each other when we make this combination. Okay, great. So notice when we combine this together, we get 2x1 squared plus 2y1 squared plus a. We're told that that is a rational number because each of these is a rational number. We also know that a is a rational number. We can divide that by 2 and we finally end up with x1 squared plus y1 squared is a rational number. Fantastic. Okay, now let's see what happens if we take the difference here. 
So AC squared minus BC squared. So in that case, we're going to have X1 plus the square root of A quantity squared plus Y1 squared, and then minus X1 minus the square root of A quantity squared minus Y1 squared. So notice I've gone ahead and distributed that minus sign through. Okay, so let's see what we get. So in this part, we're gonna have X1 squared plus two times the square root of A times X1 plus a plus y1 squared. And then in this part over here, we're going to have almost exactly the same thing, except, and then, and then let's see what we have over here. So we're going to have minus, then when we square this out, we'll have x1 squared minus 2 square root of a x1 plus a, and then another minus y1 squared. So notice a ton of stuff cancels here. So this X1 cancels with this X1, this A cancels with this A, this Y1 cancels with this Y1 squared, but then these two guys combine. So notice this minus sign will distribute in through and make that a plus, and we're left with four times the square root of A times X1. And again, we took the difference of two rational numbers, which tells us that this is also a rational number. But then we can divide this by four, and that tells us that the square root of a times x1 is also a rational number. So let's add that to our list of facts over here. Great. And now you can do a similar analysis, but instead of using AC and BC, we'll use AD and BD. So I'll let you guys check that. But similarly, using those line segments, we can get X2 squared plus Y2 squared is a rational number. And the square root of A times X2 is also a rational number. So we built those four facts off of the given that AC squared, AD squared, bc squared and bd squared were all rational numbers and in fact we don't need these givens anymore so what i'll do is i'll cross those off and then now we're left with the facts that a is a rational number and then that this sum x1 minus x2 squared y1 minus y2 squared is a rational number in addition to these four that we just derived so i'll clean up the board and i'll repopulate the top with the remaining facts so let's see where we are. So we know that A is a rational number, the sum x1 squared plus y1 squared and x2 squared plus y2 squared is a rational number, then x1 times the square root of A and x2 times the square root of A are rational numbers, and finally x1 minus x2 squared plus y1 minus y2 squared is a rational number. And our goal is to show that y1 divided by y2 is a rational number. And recall that that y1 divided by y2 is exactly the ratio of the area of these triangles like we said earlier. Okay, so we had a bunch of facts regarding squares of line segments and we used all of those to get these one, two, three, four new facts, but we haven't used this one. So now we wanna see what this will give us. So let's go ahead and write that out. We know that x1 minus x2 squared plus y1 minus y2 squared so that we're given that that combination is a rational number. So let's see what we get when we multiply this out. So that's gonna give us x1 squared minus 2x1x2 plus x2 squared plus y1 squared minus 2y1y2 plus y2 squared. So we know that that combination is a rational number. But notice that the combination of some of these terms is already known to be a rational number given this guy right here and this guy right here. So let's rewrite this a little bit. We'll rewrite this as x1 plus y1 each squared. And so that's taking this term and this term. And then plus x2 squared plus y2 squared. So that's taking this term and this term, and that leaves us with minus 2x1, x2, minus 2y1, y2. We know that this one right here is a rational number. This one right here is a rational number. And then the whole expression is a rational number. So what that tells us is that this sum right here is also a rational number. So in other words, we know that x1, x2 plus 
y1, y2 is a rational number. So I've actually changed the sign here and also divided by two, but we're okay. So let's just reiterate what happened here. This entire expression is a rational number. So in essence, what we can do is we can subtract these parts from this entire expression. That's gonna leave us with just this, but we've subtracted a rational number from a rational number, so we know that we get a rational number. Now we just change the sign and divide by two, and that gives us this combination right here as a rational number. Next, we wanna do something clever with x1 times x2 and these two facts right here. So notice, we can take x1 times x2 and we can rewrite it in the following way. That's the same thing as x1 times the square root of a times x2 times the square root of a divided by a. We know that's true because root a times root a is obviously a. So in fact, we've just multiplied by one, an a in the denominator and an a in the numerator. But now we know that all of these parts are rational numbers by what we built on the last board. So that tells us that x1 times x2 is also a rational number. But finally, that leads us to see that y1 times y2 is also a rational number. Fantastic. So now what we can do is add that to our list up here and then we're almost done. So now we wanna use these six facts that we've built up to finish this problem off. In other words, we wanna show that y1 divided by y2 is a rational number. Notice that we don't have a y1 divided by y2 up here, but we do have a y1 times y2. So we can actually rewrite this as y1 times y2 over y2 squared. We know that numerator is a rational number. Now all we have to do is show that the denominator is a rational number. And we can do that in the following way. So notice that we don't have much about the y's by themselves, but we have a lot about the x's by themselves. And we can actually use this expression right here to show that x2 squared is a rational number. We can write x2 squared as x2 times the square root of a quantity squared divided by a. So notice we're squaring a known rational number and dividing by another known rational number. So we end up with a rational number. So we've got x2 squared as a rational number. Further, we know that x2 squared plus y2 squared is a rational number. Now we can write y2 squared as x2 squared plus y2 squared minus x2 squared. So it's the difference of two known rational numbers. So in other words, y2 squared is a rational number. So now let's see what we've got. We've got y1 times y2, which we showed on the last board to be a rational number, divided by y2 squared, which we've just shown as a rational number. So in other words, this entire expression is a rational number. And we've done it. We've shown that the ratio of the area of these triangles is a rational number. That's a good place to stop.